do some donuts in the desert parking lot. Wee! Oh, there's a cone. Yeah, please don't give me a I'm over the cone. I work here. I'm sorry. I work here. Don't tell on me. They have cameras. The Trying random to, like, basketball hoop place. in the parking lot. This is such a mess, just staple. There's no basketball lines. It's just a hoop in the parking lot. Mashallah. Mashallah. Why do Muslims like basketball? Muslims like at the mosque. That's what the message did. That's what's up. All right, assalamu alaikum, guys. Welcome to another episode of Glad Tidings to the Strangers. Like the best combos happen in the car. So, what does a youth, what does being a youth mentor mean to you? Um, what are some like experiences you have as being a youth mentor? What is that like? Some stories. Yo, okay, so um, when I first started becoming a youth mentor, I was honestly really scared because I, you know, I'm, I'm not a perfect Muslim, right? And so sometimes as a youth mentor, you feel like you have to give the perfect answer or the correct answer. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's such an amana, it's such a like mm -hmm. responsibility, right? Um, and, and something crazy though is that I feel like when I became a youth mentor, um, I ended up doing, it ended up taking care of me more, I feel like, than the actual youth, right? Mm -hmm. Like being in that environment and like teaching kids actually helps me more of like connecting to my dean um, and like knowledge and everything yeah. um, than, than them. So it's kind of, I feel like it's a, in a way it's like all oh, this one like being yeah. like, how this is better for you than, you know, getting into finance. <laughs> she was in finance. <laughs> also learn about the issues in your community, yeah. right? You really see firsthand what the youth are going through, right? Not just what you yourself are going through, but like what your best friends are going through, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, and I've, like, you know, just a lot of like hot topic issues, like, um, you know, mental health issues, right? Um, even just abuse, mm -hmm. right? Family abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. Um, but again, like we were always really involved, right? So we really cared about being a part of the youth and like helping our youth, right? I think we, we saw it firsthand and we grew up with it, so we had a special lens as opposed to someone who grew up in another country and didn't really understand. I mean, Islam is also all about empowering our youth. One of the hadiths that the Prophet ﷺ tells us is that one of the people that will be under the shade of Allah on the Day of Judgment, where there's literally no shade mm -hmm. except the shade that's under his throne, mm -hmm. is going to be a youth. A young person that holds on to the dean, and I think that was like one of the other things that just really pushed us, yeah. right? Like, we want to be that youth under his shade. I mean, Allah accepts from us, and I guess that youth in the shade, and you guys too. Because you have the issues with the masjid, forget about those issues. Just bring, just go to pray. Just pray and leave. You don't have to like socialize with people. I mean, it's good too, but like, let's say you have a toxic, there's some toxic people in the masjid. Just go to pray. Don't say I'm leaving the masjid completely. Absolutely. That masjid is your space. Yeah. this into even hijab i can't look at hijab and be like sad about it i can't look at hijab and see it as this like oppressive thing when dude islam liberated woman mm -hmm. you know what year did islam come in For, oh wait after jesus 600 bc it, was it 600 i thought it was like hold on 340 it's 1400 right now and the current bc year is 2000 so like 600 BC after Jesus. Basically, no, not BC, AC, AC, <laughs> AC DC. <laughs> oh my God! No, what is it? After Christ. Pause, AC. Pause. Google it. Google it. Google it. Okay, Google it. It's 1400 right. years ago, around. Basically, 1400 years ago, Islam came right and liberated women. Islam came and told men right. That women have the right to keep their legacy, right? To keep their to keep their last name, right? They have the right to not be, you know, to still have ties with her families, right? Um, women are not property; they're not objects, right? Like Islam liberates women from that perception. Uh, women in America and in the West did not have the right to education, did not have the right to have to own their own property, to have the right to even like. The money that, you know, when their father dies, that money actually doesn't go to them. It goes to their husbands, husband, yeah. right? Like, that's that's insane. And women in the West weren't actually given that right until, until when? Like, 50 years ago. <laughs> Literally. 
1920s is when they were given Not the right to vote. To. Even oh, then, the is right it, to. yeah, right? Like it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. And so I think that another thing, and I know we're kind of going everywhere with this interview, but like, as a female, guys, as a female, and as a Muslim, you have to know your history. Aisha, the prophet's wife, she was the first scholar, right? Mm -hmm. Like she, ooh. She narrated most of the hadith. Yeah, right? And she taught men, mm -hmm. right? Like men came, went to her to learn from her, right? Hafsa bin Sirin, from the Tabi'een, and so many, there's so many examples. I can't even think of them all. In yeah. every aspect, business, in scholar, scholarliness. Soldiers, scholars. right? Ambassadors, mm -hmm. right? Like just so many examples of the female companions during the Prophet's time that had rules, right? And they weren't like these, like they weren't the normal gender roles. Although, yeah, of course you had some of that too, right? Um, and it really was. You are a woman therefore whatever role you go into is a woman's role <laughs> i love that yeah honestly you know there was no one woman's role like you're a woman therefore whatever you do is your role and a rule of thumb um when you are getting to learn you're about islam and everything um if something doesn't feel right like doesn't like legitly make sense ask your questions yeah. Like, don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. If something doesn't give you peace, then find that peace because there is a reason why maybe it won't make sense and you need that further clarification. You may think you know what it means. Mm -hmm. Like, there were times where I'm like, stuff like a translation in the Quran and the translation was kind of off. Mm -hmm. But Allah, for years, I actually sat with something and it didn't sit right. And one day I read a new translation. It was in Ramadan. I read a new translation. I'm like, where was this translation my whole life? Why would they translating Probably it like that. that exactly and i like i even looked into at that point i like googled like tafsir of it nice. and i was like guys google it don't sit on it because i've sat on, on stuff and it bothered me exactly and even google honestly there's so much out there in order to really get your answers or your questions answered go to a sheikh go to a sheikh yeah right like really get that like have them sit down to with you and like really actually you know give you the answer that and if you don't know who to ask I, I go ahead and shoot me a message and i'll find your resources for you i love doing that it makes me feel good it makes me feel good knowing that i can help somebody so don't feel shy shoot me a dm if you have a question i'll send you to the right source if you don't know who to ask there's you got me to say i quoted two chains in my intro I am proud. Are you serious? Yeah, Dude, that's my out. song. I know. That's my you song. You made me like, love that song because <laughs> it like, resonates. Um, the, but there the is chorus is great. Version. <laughs> However, it was the chorus. So anytime that song would pop up, it would always be the chorus that I would think about. Um, and it really just goes like, I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. It was just all about being like, being proud that you're different, right? Um, and especially right now, today, in modern day society, no one's different or no one wants to be different, yeah. right? Like I'm everyone's trying to, like, trying to be like Stepford Wives of like the Kardashians, right? Like literally, yeah. <laughs> like carbon copies, right? Um, Instagram, right? You really see this on Insta, like everyone gets their lips done. Everyone gets their like jaws chiseled. I mean, even and our- the Muslim community is not like- <gasps> not you know exception oh heck no yeah. i'm muslim yeah i'm muslim she had a finger up to the one who's listening ah! bars bars no, that was okay listen you guys listen i'm gonna give you some real talk right here don't ever feel like being different is something to be ashamed of when it's quite boring to be the same thing as other people right so be different, thrive in your difference, and also learn about your religion because Islam is perfect, right? Islam is perfect and it's so beautiful because when you are curious about your religion or you have questions and then you end up like searching for answers, that is you actually getting empowered, right? Because you are finding the answers to your questions and you're letting that shape who you're going to be in the future.